the Holy Israel says that there are three levels of divine service. Rabbi Israel Misalant explains that if you want to actually have a good eternity, these are the three steps you have to take. The three levels of divine service start with the following. The first one, the gateway and the beginning, the beginning of your tshuva, what is it? Developing a sensitivity to your own flaws. Developing a sensitivity, meaning check yourself over and over again. And, because, and notice that, oh, ah, I didn't pray on time. Ah, I just violated Shabbat. Ah, I just wasted seed. Ah, I just looked at this girl I wasn't supposed to. Ah, I start noticing when you're sinning and or start rebuking yourself. You don't need uh, me walking after you all day, hey, do this, do this. You don't need that. You know when you did wrong. You know when you did right. It's simple. You know right and wrong. Hashem gave you a neshama. You know right and wrong. If you're doing wrong and there's bad things that are happening in your life, you have to connect the dots. That's what, that's what distinguishes you from an animal. Animal works off of instinct. So when the animal goes and chases down another uh, uh, food, he's not thinking, oh, you know, if I eat the zebra, his it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, kids are going to cry, his wife is going to be, uh, be alone. You know, he's, he's the one that was really bringing most of the money in the house. He's not, the lion is th- not thinking like this. When the cow is hungry, he's not thinking, ah, you know what, I should share the grass. I should share some of this grass with my friend. He's not thinking like this. He's thinking, I'm going to eat whatever I have in front of me. So when the butcher says, hey, cow, come, come over here, come, kapa alecha, come, come over here, come, and he slaughters it, the cow is not thinking, oh, maybe it's because I ate the grass. Maybe it's because I didn't share. He doesn't think like that. Why? Because he's an animal. He's a cow. He doesn't think, oh, maybe I did something bad and that's why they're slaughtering me. Which means, Abutai, that we cannot be cows. If you did something bad, you must have the intuition, the ability, the inclination, and the willpower to connect the dots. Nothing bad happens without Hashem signing off on it. Gemara Masechet Chulim, page 8. 5. Nothing bad in the world happens without Hashem saying, has to happen. Which means that if you got into an accident of any kind, if you have a bad feeling of any kind, it's because something happened. Hashem is talking to you in that way. Doesn't mean He hates you. It's the opposite. He actually means He loves you. He's giving you an opportunity to fix it. If He hated you, He lets you continue doing sins, sins, sins without even feeling any remorse. So the first step of tshuva rabotai is developing the sensitivity to your own flaws and the need to repent, the need to do tshuva for these sins. How do you do this? The only Israel says, Abi Israel Misalant, he says, this is engendered by studying Chazal's dictums and our sages' Musar teachings. A person must repeat them over and over and over and over again until he is finally moved and senses a lacking in his soul. Meaning, a Musar book is not like a Harry Potter book. It's not like a non-fiction book. It's not like a bio. A Musar book is something you have to repeat over and over again, meditate on, think about, try to figure out how it applies to you it could take you a year to finish a 200-page book, assuming that you're a normal reader and you could finish that in a month or two months. The point being is that it, should take, it could take you 10 times longer to read a Musar book if you really read it. Or you're going to read the same book 5, 10, 20 times. I have some students tell me, it's like, I can't believe it. I watched a shiur that you made when you made it. And then I watched it again a week later, and I got something completely different out of it. And then I watched the shiur again, just to see. There's no way. This time I got it. I watched the shiur twice already. Same shiur, twice. Let's watch shiur three times. It goes the same shiur, third time, something completely different. I said, yes, that's the beauty of the Torah. That's the beauty of the Torah, especially when it comes to Musa. So, Rabbi Yisrael Misalant is telling you that when you're learning Musa, you have to read it over and over again until it moves you. Meaning that sometimes you can read something and it doesn't change anything. 
You learn about violating Shabbat and it doesn't do anything for you. You learn about being, uh, you know, instead of being greedy, being generous, doesn't move you. You learn about the problems of having an ego, a big ego, doesn't move you. And so on and so forth. Read it until it does. That's the first step. Second step, second level, he says, is conquering the evil inclination. Once you realize there's a problem, you have to start overcoming it. Once you realize that you're not allowed to have a huge ego, once you realize that you're not allowed to get angry on a regular basis, or ever really, once you realize that all of these bad character traits are strictly forbidden in the Torah, you have to overcome it. That's, what, again, what distinguishes us from being an animal. They work off of instinct. We don't. If you have a midah, you can change it. Thinking, no, no, I was born angry, I'll die angry. It's like saying I was born without any money, so I might as well just die. I'm not going to go to work. Well, you still go to work. No, no, nothing stops you from going to work. Nothing stops you from dream, dreaming of being rich. So how come when it comes to fixing yourself, there's something stopping you before you start? It's an excuse. So you have to start conquering the Yetzirah. Of course, some are going to be harder than others, some are going to be easier than others, but the point is you have to battle it out and start doing it. Do something about it. Sometimes you beat it today, and tomorrow you fail. Get up, try again. Beat it again, two, three, four days, and now you fail again. Try up, get up, do it again. How many times? Forever. There's no such thing as a person that doesn't make sins. Everybody makes sins. The point is doing tshuva. Now you're only going to get to that second level if you already have the first one, which means that you're sensitive to actually making sins. After that, the third level, the Holy Israel says, is rectification of the evil inclination so that he will rejoice and delight in his divine service. Pretty much destroying the Yetzirah, where at that point you realize, get out of my house. Not that you beat it and, oh, you, you just held on and you didn't make this sin. Now you're actually celebrating the fact that you're doing what Hashem wants and not what the Yetzirah is doing. So this is all a process. It only starts with something that's simple that everybody here can do. Realize you're making a sin. Acknowledge there's a problem. Acknowledge that we're sick. After that, we can start working on a cure.